Hi, this is Salman Waris. I'm again a technology and a telecom lawyer, and um, I have my own firm called Tech Ledgers. Uh, what I just wanted to come back to was the license uh, issue, whether this should be licensed or not. Uh, frankly, we've done a study internationally, and majority of the countries that we found were either not licensing it, hmm. or uh, they were just uh, regulating it in some form, so which would have been uh, in the form of a registration. So there were just a handful of countries that were actually licensing this technology. So I just wanted to share that uh, from a global perspective. Okay. Uh, About the license fee, 8% are we are also paying since 2006. We are not denying that. The 8% license fee we want to pay. In regards to your this uh, entry fee, what uh, the government is saying, ki that they have paid 1656 crores, you are paying 1 rupee. Let me tell you one thing, and we have seen this. That 1656 crore paying one time, they have claimed 24,000 crore worth of spectrum. Right. So indirectly, the government is paying them for running a service. And if you just go back to five years back again, initially the license fee was fixed license fee on the mobile. Should there be a license to provide BOIP? But presently looking at the all the services, what you are saying, Skype, WhatsApp, FaceTime, now the Duo, when they are not giving any license or license fee or service tax, mm. then why this services should be licensed? So, so as a licensed player, you don't mind if they're players that operate without a license? No, they, they should uh, operate without the license. I don't mind. Okay. But at the same time, this services should be freed from the license. This okay. services should not be under the license because when this service has become an application, hmm. then what for the license fee is there? So I'm Adnan. I used to be a telecom software engineer, uh, mostly an interested party in VoIP. So one of the reasons why you would pay license is that you need to have a number to dial, right? So someone has to maintain that number. Someone has to make sure it's routable via all, uh, because the expectation of the telephone is that you should be able to reach every every person on the network. It doesn't matter what their end, end technology or the last mile technology, whether it's VoIP or it's uh, mobile or it's landline. So someone has to maintain that number, numbering database. And that, that, that could be one of the reasons why you have pay a license. There are resources we as people are giving to, to those companies and there's a license fee in lieu of that. The question of, uh, if we talk about UIP without terminating the call onto a handset or a telephone, then you're really talking about an application and we pay for that through data services, the consumer pays. And obviously when you're talking of UIP between two smartphones, say for instance, you're really talking about then it, it being just a data application which is paid for through data rates. Why the data rates are different from voice rates is a different issue. But the question is we are paying for it and mm -hmm. that's a license they have bought. They have accepted that they have data services. And if we try to distinguish between various applications and try, try to license these applications, this is actually a completely mugs game. You're not going to get nowhere. So I think that's, a, that's completely a wrong route to go down technologically. The third point is what happens if you terminate on a handset, hmm. on an actual phone number, in which case you really come again on the issue of interconnection charges. If you want to terminate on that, and again, since the other side is VOIP, other side is really an application. How to handle the inter inter interconnection charges is the only issue that I think is relevant. But otherwise, licensing uh, VOIP per se, without considering where it's terminating, I think it's completely a wrong route to go down. So we'll, we'll move to the, inter, uh, the PSC in interconnection in a bit. I actually wanted yeah. to ask Rajesh. No, I'm, I'm, the, sure. What I'm really Please. saying yeah. is that, yes, there is a logic for licensing. Whatever the license fee paid or not paid, whether it's high, low, it's a different issue. Licensing of? Licensing of the telecom operator. Don't forget, if you say licensing, you are talking of licensing per se. Hmm. We also license data services, data. So data and voice licensing, I can understand. Right. Application licensing as a licensing, I don't understand. I, I can understand voice service, data services, two services which should be licensed. But any application, then there are a million applications. Are you going to license all of them? Which is what actually the DRI so, paper originally said. So one said. of the things that... So I think licensing, uh, I, some opinions have already come in over here. See, licensing is for, as the gentleman said, it's for the spectrum, it's for the right of way. So licensing is for, for the mine, I have given you a mine hmm. which has resources, I have licensed you, right? Anybody who builds a value after that, 
he does not need a license. So I think this opinion has already come in. So I think cloud telephony lies in that area that you can come out with several innovative applications <coughs> where you will already use the licensed operator resources, you don't need a license. Nikhil. Also, I think uh, we need to uh, understand there are two pieces. One is internet, another is PSTN. PSTN already there is a license, there, there are conditions, what you have to do, related to interception, keeping data, etc. But internet still is a comparatively liberal space. Uh, so when we are connecting, if it is VIP to VIP call, this is completely lying in internet space. It will be regulated by IT Act, which is relatively better or I'll say uh, uh, less burdensome. Uh, but if it is being connected to PSTN, then I think these questions will arise. How PSTN, those compliances will uh, seep into internet space. How do you see an interconnection going into PSTN? I mean, what do you think is going to come out? Uh, so this is still a riddle in my mind. I I am figuring out uh, what is this light licensing when we say VIP to PSTN should be regulated under light licensing. What does it mean? Practically speaking, if you look, I'll say from telco's angle, uh, because P uh, this termination concept is that they will be compensated for the work done. Uh, for taking a call from point of interconnection to receiving end. So same work they have to do in this case also. If there is a VIP call coming to their network, will be terminated to PST and they will ask same amount for same work done. So when we say light licensing should be there for VIP to PSTN, uh, we need to figure out how to uh, provide answer to this problem. So is there going to be a charge that comes in or is it going to be uh, a simple calling party pays mechanism again coming in without an interconnection uh, I think one of the things that was being discussed was also zero charges uh, f uh, for termination oh, so, uh, so, so again I'll say uh, what's the answer for telcos that I will be doing this part of the job because I'm not going to charge from the receiving party hmm. uh, so who is going to compensate to me so that's the question we need to figure out answer to uh, if it is end to end data uh, call then obviously there is no point for compensating to anyone because both the parties are paying for the data whatever they are using for that something that we seem to have missed is the is the fact that the PSTN uh, effectively is also an identity provider right which is licensed by the government so uh, you know how does you know the moment you start to you know connect different technologies where uh, you're coming in over IP where you know identity is relatively you know, less regulated versus into the PST and where it is heavily regulated. When it comes to, to data, that is actually regulated uh, explicitly by the Ministry of uh, IT. So, uh, and if you, if you try to uh, come up with regulations uh, to regulate like one platform or one service that are coming from two different places, that is obviously going to uh, pose problems. And I think that, uh, you know, this, this uh, the, the government in power right now in a previous avatar, uh, if I remember correctly, it was them, came out with something called the Communications Convergence Bill. Yeah, yeah we are out of time, so I thought could, we'll could converge. Could Suhan get the last yeah. word in, please? Suhan, you can have the last word. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. No, so again, I, I think the point is that are we going to work with the state of play as it currently is or are we going to actually look at asking government to take a conceptual step back? Because we have to ask them to reconsider this overarching piece of security that they keep talking about. Again, licensing and sale of, and auctioning of spectrum and things like that, which have become a given from the anti-corruption approach that, okay, the state has to make this much of revenue. I think this sector requires going back to the drawing board. Otherwise, we are always nickeling and diming on trying to fix this and coming. And again, the bureaucrats that are appointed are people who've been in the system for 30 years, 35, 40 years. I think it has to go, whether at the Niti Aayog or at the Prime Minister's office level, to say conceptually what is our strategy and our vision in the long run and then work backwards from that rather than saying that okay we have the telecom licenses we have the telegraph act we have this now let's figure out how do we tinker with all of this because otherwise that's that sustainable solution is not going to come and why we need to address what the telco thinks or what people in this room think is because government cannot afford not to think about it when it comes out with a solution so the important piece on change is very often we don't think of the narrative that the sovereign has to come up with for justifying a certain action. Hmm. You know, and we have to be able to figure out those arguments to buttress or to drive government to move in a certain direction because they will get pushback from the other side. It's like 
when we were looking at net neutrality, if you remember the TRAI conference, I said we have to support the telcos on re license rationalization. No, I completely you know? agree. And, in fact, uh, and I think this space requires, and I think that point on convergence is very, very important. I just update you about your 2008. What you have spoken. It was the first time Mr. Nipen Mishra was the outgoing TRAI chairman. Hmm. He came out with this uh, recommendation of unrestricted internet telephony to the ISP. Hmm. And he understood the importance of this because, as you rightly say, that mobile operator and the landline operators were not at all interested in uh, starting these services. What the reason what they were saying is that it will hit their revenue. But at the front end, they were saying that it, there is a lawful interception issue, okay, that uh, that Bombay uh, issue has taken place. And uh, those guys, we have spoken on the internet telephony. And that's why this cannot be checked. While it was checked, and we were able to identify mm -hmm. where is the issue. In 2008, when uh, this uh, recommendation has come, we have represented to the DOT for their acceptance. And they kept quiet. Kept quiet. In 2010, finally, ISPI gone into the competition commission because the incumbent player D uh, BSNL is directly or indirectly is the part of the DOT. Right. And we taken this case very strongly into the competition commission that uh, they are using their power to uh, save the BSNL. And uh, in competition commission, an affidavit has come. Just uh, carefully note the date. In the month of May 2011, affidavit has been submitted by the DOT okay, that the consultation paper, the recommendation of the TRAI given in 2008 is under consideration hmm. of the department and we will take immediate action on this recommendation. So I remember, a, so I was going through media, old media Nama post and I noticed a statement from you at that point in time saying that VOIP is going to be great for broadband growth in India. Correct. And here we are eight years later still discussing. Still discussing the same thing.